Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us. Breaking news tonight reports a 24-year-old British national is the leading suspect in the barbaric beheading of American journalist James Foley. More on this coming up, but first, my open. This is the last straw. President Obama's response in both words and action to the beheading of American James Foley was so weak, wimpy, and pathetic that it's embarrassing. In times like these, great leaders understand both the enormity and the urgency of the situation. They take the reins and they lead. Not our president. He channels Teddy Roosevelt, but instead of speak softly and carry a big stick, it speaks softly and carry a big Bertha. But oh, he talks a big game. We will be vigilant and we will be relentless. When people harm Americans anywhere, we do what's necessary to see that justice is done. Relentless for at least eight minutes until you get back to the golf course on your three week vacation. Mr. President, where is your humanity? This innocent man and his family deserve better. British Prime Minister Cameron, at the sound of the killer's British accent, immediately left his vacation and flew home to get back to work. Americans are justifiably outraged and wonder if you are disengaged, tired, overworked, bored, or just clueless. But then again, at this point, what difference does it make? What difference do you make? What difference can you make? There are no words to describe the horror, the savagery, the beheading of James Foley. To describe the agony of his mom and dad who for two years while ISIS held him hostage fought to bring him home. We're the greatest country on earth. We're Americans. They'll bring him home. Yes. Hope does spring eternal. But there are no words to describe the disappointment when nations far less powerful bring their hostages home while the greatest, most powerful nation on earth does not. And there are no words to describe the anxiety, the panic, the loss of hope, the desperation, the moment ISIS emails how and when their son will die. No words to describe the finality. The animal, hooded in black, in the process of decapitating an American forced to his knees, his hands bound, his head pulled back. And you, Mr. President, fist bump your friends within minutes on the golf course? You are so weak that when criticized that you hadn't done enough, you spill your guts and then blame the intelligence community again. We tried to get him, but it didn't work. Excuse me? Isn't that classified information? Haven't you indicted people for less under the Espionage Act? You not only burnt our sources, you put the other American hostages in even more danger. And what's that? You don't pay ransoms? You don't negotiate with terrorists? Well, what the hell was the Bergdahl trade? Aside from replenishing the enemy in a time of war, you violated not one, but two laws. If you don't negotiate with terrorists, what was John Kerry doing with Hamas? And why were you negotiating with Iran on its nuclear proliferation? Not only are the American people justifiably outraged, but even your own Pentagon disagrees with you. They at least understand the enormity of what's at stake. Hagel seems damn scared. They're, they're beyond just a terrorist group. They are tremendously well-funded. Oh, this is beyond anything that, that we've seen. Dempsey gets it. This is an organization that has an apocalyptic end of days strategic vision and which will eventually have to be defeated. But you're not going to act without your favorite line, the international community standing alongside us. Mr. President. 
Why do we need someone to stand alongside us? I didn't see anyone standing alongside James Foley. He was alone in that desert, his blood staining the sand. He was an American, our son. And you play golf. But hey, good news, you put Eric Holder in charge. Really? You want to prosecute these guys? Mr. President, you don't have a clue. This is an act of war. These are crimes against humanity. Why not just admit it? You don't want the job. You want the perks, the vacations, the golf. You don't want the responsibility. You can't make a decision. You live in a make-believe world colored with vanishing red lines. Well, that just doesn't cut it for us anymore. Stop being a spectator and start being a leader. What are you waiting for? What is your goal? And people like this ultimately fail. Wishing and hoping doesn't cut it. Hitler failed, but only after he killed six million people. If you do not have as your goal the destruction of ISIS, if you do not have the determination, the desire, and the stamina, then you need to leave. And I'm not talking about vacation. You need to leave the White House. Remove yourself from the most powerful position on Earth. You are putting Americans on the wrong side of history, risking everything we worked for. But if you decide to stay, take a listen to what a real leader sounds like. I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. You ask what is our policy? To wage war against a monstrous tyranny never surpassed in the dark and lamentable catalogue of human crime. What is our aim? Victory. Victory at all costs. Victory in spite of all terror. Victory however long and hard the road may be. For without victory there is no survival. And that's my open. With me now, former U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. and Fox News contributor John Bolton. Uh, all right, John, although Fox hasn't independently confirmed this, the London Sunday Times reports British intelligence has identified the terrorist who killed James Foley, but they have not named him publicly. Your reaction? Well, I think that's one of the reasons that British Prime Minister Cameron returned from his vacation. I think uh, British intelligence probably had some idea fairly quickly uh, of the identity because uh, the, these people were tracked while they were in England. And I think that they're concerned there might be uh, co-conspirators uh, in London that they want to try and roll them up as well. So I, I suspect there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And that really underlines why ISIS constitutes such a threat that it's present in Western Europe, perhaps present in the United States. We know already there are hundreds, maybe thousands of ISIS fighters in Iraq and Syria right now who hold valid European or American passports. So I think the, uh, the identification of the killer is an important first step, not only for, uh, for, for bringing, uh, bringing justice to these people, uh, but for helping to reveal the, the breadth, the depth, the extent of the threat to us right now that ISIS represents. And, and you know, Ambassador, I mean, you, you talk about the fact that a lot of them hold valid passports and, and they don't need visas and they can come into the United States, no questions asked. Uh, I mean, they don't even need a passport. They can come through the southern border, as we well know. But you know, my concern right now is that the, the president is clueless. And, and I think that you've said that you don't think he understands the full nature of ISIS. Why do you say that? Well, I go beyond that, really, uh, although I don't think he does. I don't think the president cares about American national security. I've been saying this for almost six years. I just don't think it's a priority for him. Unlike every other American president, at least since Franklin Roosevelt, it's not what gets him up in the morning. His first thought is not, what threats does the United States face today? He's much more concerned with reordering our country domestically. So he looks at this act Yeah, but he's brutality. not doing a good job of that either, Ambassador. Yeah. Well, that's well, that depends on how you look at it. You know, he said his aim was to fundamentally transform America. And I'm, I'm worried that he may be succeeding. But but the point is, he just is not concerned 
with threats to the United States. It's part ideology because he thinks we're too powerful as it is. Uh, and it's part, as you rightly said, he lives in a dream world. He has no concept uh, of how uh, international affairs works or the kinds of threats we face from evil people like those in ISIS. And, and you know, I mean, even the statement itself, like, oh, these people fail in the end, uh, you know, talk about, you know, hope and change. That's wishing and hoping. Uh, and, and the optics of his playing golf, I mean, people are outraged. People are fuming about that. Does, does he have no sense of, of humanity? Well, I think he's so he, he's living in his own world. He thinks that his his mere existence as president will be enough to guarantee his place in history. And, and in a certain sense, he's right. But, you know, I don't think it's so much the golf that bothers people. If he were staying up late into the night, pouring over soybean subsidies, uh, working as hard as he could, that, that wouldn't change people's view. The problem is they just don't think that he's doing what we principally send presidents to Washington to do, which is protect the country. And, and I, think that's gonna, I, I think that's why we need other political leaders to raise this issue and to say, look, it's, it's only 13 years after 9-11. Have we forgotten already? I think the president has, but I don't think the American people have. I think it's time for a debate on this issue. Well, and, and you know, when you listen to, and, and uh, you know, people like Winston Churchill and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, I mean, Churchill was so humble. I mean, the humility comes through when he talks about it, and, and Roosevelt as well. I mean, they understood the enormity of what what they were facing, the risk to our survival. These people want to wipe us off the face of the earth. I mean, and, and you know, as an American, should I feel that my government is doing everything it can to protect me? It's not. Clearly, it's not. And, and the press conference that you broadcast the excerpt from uh, of Hagel and Dempsey, uh, although the Pentagon rolled it back a little bit the next day, I'm sure mm -hmm. under White House pressure, what that showed was that they understand full well over there, uh, because of the intelligence and other information they have, what a threat ISIS amounts to and why it's so important if we're going to uh, do anything about it to act quickly in contrast to the president who doesn't see it as a threat. You know, Neville Chamberlain once described Czechoslovakia as a faraway country with, uh, lived with people about whom we know little. Uh, and that brought us to Munich. I think mm. the president okay. feels the same way about ISIS in Iraq. They're a long way away. No threat oh. to the United States. What a shame. Ambassador John Bolton, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, the Obama administration discusses the failed secret mission. Does this leak put even more American lives at risk? And vote on tonight's Instapol. What should America do about the other U.S. hostages held by ISIS? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine.